In this video, we're building the ultimate Murphy bed. With the help of some strangers that we met on the internet, we're gonna transform this stack of lumber into the coolest bed that I've ever seen, complete with a queen-sized mattress, electric sliding table, and loads of storage. With only 72 hours to get this build done, let's get to work. We teamed up with Dylan and Molly from Woodbrew for this project. Dylan started by designing the entire project in SketchUp. Seeing the model had me very excited to bring his design to life. We're gonna start by building the wall cabinet. This will be what the mattress closes into. For most of this project, we're gonna be using three quarter inch cabinet grade maple plywood. We started by sliding a piece of one inch XPS foam under the first plywood sheet. It turns out that not all tape measures are created equal, and there was almost a quarter inch of variation between the four tape measures that I own. We picked the two tapes that measured the same and got to work measuring out our first cuts. This is my first time using a track saw and I'm pretty excited. I hope that it lives up to the hype. I set the track down on my marks, placed the saw on the track and made my first cut. Oh, wow. I was blown away by how effortless we were able to make extremely precise and clean cuts. This was so much easier than trying to handle these large sheets on our rickety table saw. The sacrificial foam helped keep the sheets from moving around and it allowed us to cut all the way through the sheet with the blade without nicking the sheets below. Dylan called out the cuts to me and he made sure to label each piece as it was created. I was very impressed by how organized he was. His software even told him what order we should be cutting each sheet into to maximize the material usage. This guy is the most organized person I've ever done a project with. You should see the spreadsheets he sent me to prepare for this. At this point, we decided we should bring the first piece into the container and check our fitment. This container is exactly wide enough for the length of a queen bed, so it's going to be a very tight fit. Are we gonna need to build this thing in here? Like, how are we gonna get this in here? That's a problem for later. We got an excavator. <laughs> and, a, and a professional operator. <laughs> Wait, right here behind the camera. <laughs> With the help of a duct tape adapter, I was able to fit my shop vac to the track saw and minimized our dust. I cut the remaining pieces needed for the wall cabinet and Dylan labeled them and laid them out in order. Next, it was time to install the wall side bed hardware. This is what the mattress box is going to pivot about on. Dylan used a Forstner bit to start each end of the hole and then a router to finish out the pocket. We then mirrored that same pattern onto the other side of the wall cabinet. Dylan is extremely precise and his attention to detail paid off because the pieces fit perfectly. Now it was time to learn another new skill. Because the majority of the wood we're using is plywood, it has an exposed, unfinished edge. We're going to use something called edge banding to seal these ends off and make it look a lot more finished. The banding comes with the adhesive pre-applied. We place the banding on the edge and then used an iron to heat the glue and create the bond. The banding is oversized, so once it was fully glued on, we went back with a razor blade and trimmed each side flush. Then we used 220 grit sandpaper to really smooth the edges and blend them into the plywood. This was an extremely time consuming process, but the results were incredible. It took what was relatively inexpensive plywood and turned it into what looks like solid sheets of hardwood. I then hit all of the finished faces with the orbital sander and 120 grit sandpaper. Before we could start assembling the cabinet box, we needed to add pocket holes. This is going to allow us to make a strong box with completely hidden fasteners. We added pocket holes to all the outside edges of the box. <laughs> what felt like 100 pocket holes later, it was almost time to assemble the wall cabinet. We ripped some poplar down into 1x2 strips, ran a bead of glue, and used the nail gun to pin them into place at a right angle before fully securing them with screws. This piece is going to trim out the front upper section of the wall cabinet so there won't be any exposed fasteners. And now it's time to assemble our first cabinet. This is where all these pocket holes we drilled come into play and we fully screwed the box together. And by the end of the day, we had our first cabinet complete. Hello? Courtney, the propane's here. Today is an exciting day because for the first time ever, Courtney and I are actually getting prepared early for winter time. If you've been around this channel for a while, then you know that in the winter time, we rely heavily on a propane generator to make our electricity. And so with that, we'd like to thank Feral Gas for sponsoring this video. 
Living off grid, propane is a critical resource for us, and with frequent outages in town, it would be equally as important if we relied on the grid. Ferrogas has been one of America's leading propane providers since 1939. It's all about making propane easy with advanced technology and a reliable propane supply. Their team has provided me with great customer service, and I know that my family's in good hands. Whether you have a 500 gallon tank like us or something even bigger, Ferrogas fuels life simply by making sure you never have to think twice about your propane. Their autofill programs take that call to order propane off your to-do list, and you can even add digital tank monitoring for an extra level of protection. Feral Gas's platform is super user-friendly and works well on any device. I love that I can access the online portal from my phone whenever and wherever I need to. If you want to take one more thing off your to-do list, head to the link below to learn more about Feral Gas. And thanks again to Feral Gas for sponsoring this video and keeping my property fueled. Day two started with the realization that after years of abusing my jigsaw on steel, it wasn't even remotely square anymore. Dylan decided it was probably good enough and got to work tracing the first radius. By putting down some painter's tape, he'll help prevent the jigsaw from tearing out the veneer and creating a rough edge. The Murphy bed kit that we're using comes with all of the required templates, making this process very easy. For this part, we're building the sides of the mattress box. This is what the Murphy bed lifter arms will attach to, allowing the mattress to fold out of the wall cabinet and they need to be very sturdy because when we're folding the bed, the entire weight of the mattress rests on these arms. While Dylan worked on that, I started on the bottom of the mattress box. We need a rigid but thin platform that can support the weight of the mattress and two humans, and maybe a few dogs too. I started by cutting the pieces to length. We ran a bead of glue down the joint before using a nail gun to temporarily hold them into place. Then we pre-drilled each hole to prevent them from splitting before screwing them together permanently. This is going to create much stronger cross pieces for underneath the mattress. <laughs> this was the nice one. With the cross pieces done, it was time to lay out the mattress frame. I then pre-drilled and screwed the entire frame together, relying on our concrete floor to keep things flat. Then I glued and nailed a piece of 1x3 poplar that will be our finished face. Now it was time for more edge banding. Like, so much edge banding. This part of the process was incredibly time consuming, but the results were definitely worth it. At this point, it was all hands on deck to get this step done because we only have one day left to get this bed done. We put down a blanket before laying down the sheets of maple. These are going to become the front face of the cabinets when the bed is closed and we wanted to protect them from scratches and dents. We set the bed frame down on top of the sheets of plywood and installed the mattress frame side pieces with glue, nails, and screws. It's really important this part of the cabinet be strong because it's going to support the entire force of the mattress rotating up and down. Dylan then traced everywhere the bed frame overlapped so we would know where to add wood glue. Then we lowered the frame back down, checked for square, and screwed the mattress frame down. Now we attached all the Murphy bed hardware to the mattress box sides. This hardware was all included in the Murphy bed kit we're using. There's a link in the description below. We also installed the Murphy bed hardware onto the wall cabinet side of the bed. In order to get the mattress box inside of the wall cabinet, we had to remove the back of the wall cabinet. This allowed us to gently splay open the sides of the cabinets and place the pivot arms into the holes on the side of the mattress box. Then we were able to stand the cabinet back up and the mattress box was now captured inside of the wall cabinet. We had a few options for finishing the wood, so we wanted to prepare a sample piece. Dylan sanded, cleaned, and prepped the wood for a few different options. The first one called Walnut turned out gray and streaky. The second option called Black looked a lot better, but we still weren't sure it was the right look. Ultimately, we decided that a raw wood look sealed with a clear finish would be the best look for our space. It was time to start making a plan for how we were going to get this cabinet into the shipping container. To keep it from swinging open while we moved it, we temporarily installed the stops with the door pushed inward. And to reduce weight, we left the back and the toe kick off the cabinet. Dylan, is it gonna fit? Once it was in the container, we reinstalled the back and toe kick pieces. With Dylan pulling on the cabinet from behind, we slowly inched the bed into place, trying to be as careful as possible not to damage the trimmer walls that Courtney had worked so hard on. Okay. Okay. We're, we're on the wall. It was a very snug fit, and for a moment we didn't think it was going to go. 
But with a little bit of persuasion, we were able to get the cabinet all the way back into place. Then it was time to let Dylan out of the cabinet and celebrate the win. Our cabinet that Dylan designed from the other side of the country actually fit. Yeah, it looks awesome. Dylan installed the cabinet poles on the face of the cabinet and mounted the cabinet securely to the wall. Oh yeah. <laughs> this was our first trust exercise of the weekend. We weren't able to compress the gas struts that lift the bed to get them installed, so Dylan had to go back into the cabinet and install them with the door completely closed. With the cabinet poles installed, we can now move on to adding the quarter inch pre-finished birch plywood to the bottom of the mattress box. We made sure to sandwich two elastic bands with screws into the front corners. This will keep the mattress in place when the bed is folded up. Enter day three, just 24 hours to go on this build. With the bed portion of the cabinet complete, it was time to move on to the dinette. Dylan and Molly are leaving tomorrow, so it's our last day to get this project done. I'm really getting the hang of using this track saw, and I literally can't believe I've gone this long in my life without owning one. It would have been such a game changer on our truck camper build. Yet again, it was time for another edge banding party. Molly would iron the strips on, Dylan and I would trim to width with a razor blade, and Cordy would sand the edges smooth. I was feeling so thankful for Dylan and Molly's help at this point, because their positive energy and mad skills made quick work of it all. The front edges of the dinette benches are also getting a rounded edge, so Dylan traced them using a paint can before cutting them out with a jigsaw. I decided to give the second one a shot, and I'll just say that Dylan made it look way easier than it actually is. Just like the wall cabinet, these benches are going to be assembled using pocket screws. Dylan drilled the pocket holes in every piece while I assembled the boxes. I haven't worked with pocket screws very much, but in this application, they're great. You end up with a joint with concealed fasteners that is extremely strong and also really easy to assemble. These benches are going to double as storage, so the top of the boxes needs a removable lid. We cut a piano hinge down to size using a grinder before screwing it down to the lid and then the cabinet box. At least 100 screws later and it was time to set the first box into place. Wow, that looks so good! In a 20-foot shipping container, every square inch counts, and the amount of storage that these boxes add is huge. With the second box in place, it's time to build the upper cabinets. These are going to add even more storage and really give this piece a finished, built-in look. Yet again, we used pocket screws to assemble the boxes before adding hinges and cabinet poles. It took a while to adjust the hinges and get everything straight, but wow, does that look good. Now it's time for the part that I am most excited about, the electric raising table. There sure are lots of pieces to this thing. Dylan started by making a wood trim riser for the table base before plugging in the base and screwing it into the container floor. Then we confirmed that the raised and lowered dimensions are going to work perfect for our plan. The sun had set, but we were determined to take this project to the finish line. We routed the wiring for the table back into the wall cabinet box where a previously installed outlet was located. Then we ran the wiring for the remote through one of the benches so that it can be easily accessed. We're going to be using a butcher block top. Dylan cut it to size using the track saw and added a nice rounded edge to both front corners. Dylan held the table in place while I screwed it to the table leg from below, making sure that it cleared both benches in the fully down position. The table is height adjustable using the remote and the benches comfortably sit for people. We were stoked. And finally, the last step of the night was to install the mattress because this is where Dylan and Molly are sleeping tonight. We folded down the platform and placed the mattress inside. We're all relieved that it fits perfectly. The gas struts were too strong for the weight of our mattress, so Dylan used a socket and threaded the adjuster bolts in to lessen the lifting power. Dylan and Molly started this weekend as complete strangers, but 72 hours later and they're leaving as true friends. Their creativity and hard work helped make this build a reality. So make sure to head over to Woodbrew and check out their video about this build. If you'd like to build your own version, we've put together a complete set of plans and parts list, link in the description below. Thanks for watching and we'll see you next time.